Hi and welcome back to our Walking in the Word series that we're doing. And uh, we've talked a lot about Bible translations, which Bible to choose, and, and uh, reading the Bible. And now we're going to get into it. We're going to get into studying the Bible. Um, most of this series is going to be a very high level, 35,000 foot view of Scripture so that uh, when you are reading through scripture you can know where you are and what you're reading but we're going to start <clears throat> our little journey our big journey with uh, a deep dive into the first three chapters of genesis now before we get into the actual first three chapters of genesis we need to know where we are and like i mentioned before we need a map and so that's where the table of contents in your Bible comes from. Table of contents. So if you have a Bible, open it up. <clears throat> and it's important to know where you are when you're reading Scripture. So we're starting in Genesis, and you can see that's the very first book of the Bible, and that's intentional. So what I would do is I would take your pen and make a bracket around these different sections and label them in your table of contents like we talked about before it's okay to mark your bible i give you permission and so what we're going to do is we're going to mark off the different sections of the bible so that when you're opening up your your word you can know where you're at what you what you're about to read <clears throat> so the first five books genesis exodus leviticus numbers and Deuteronomy. Put a little bracket around those five books. That's called the Torah. And we're going to talk about that more um, when we start. If After we're done with the first three chapters of Genesis, we'll talk about what the Torah is. But that's the five books of Moses. And uh, whenever it's mentioned in Scripture, the Law and the Prophets, this is what they're pointing to. The Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, from Joshua all the way to Esther, put another bracket around that. That is history. All of this is history. This is the history of the nation of Israel, how it came to be, all the way from uh, from when Joshua brings the nation of Israel into into Canaan and claims Israel as its promised land through all the different kings, through the judges first and then the kings, and uh, then to the exile, to Babylon, and then back again. So there's a lot of history from Joshua all the way up to Esther. From Job to Song of Songs is the wisdom literature or poetry. Psalms is probably something you're familiar with. So all of that you would label with a bracket, wisdom literature. From Isaiah all the way to Malachi, big section there. That's the prophets. Now you can subdivide this with Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel being the major prophets. And that doesn't mean that they're better than the other ones. It just means that they're bigger books. They're much bigger books. Uh, and then the rest are minor prophets. But from Isaiah all the way to Malachi are the prophets. And that is pretty much the Old Testament in our current Christian Bibles. Uh, Jewish Bibles have it a little bit different order to them. And we'll talk about that when we get into the Torah. Uh, if you are Roman Catholic, if you are Orthodox, you might find extra books in there. And they're called the Apocrypha, uh, Maccabees, Judith, Wisdom, all of those. They're important books. Uh, Protestants don't consider them to be uh, part of the canon, part of scripture, but that doesn't mean they're not important. They're, they're actually really important. And if you believe they're scripture, if you are Orthodox or Catholic, I don't get upset about that. I mean, they're really, really important books and worth reading. We're not going to focus on those because I'm not a Catholic or an Orthodox, but they're worth looking into. All right, New Testament. Let's get into the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of course. These are the Gospels. 
put a bracket around that and write Gospels. Acts is kind of its own thing. It's Luke part two. So Luke wrote the, the Gospel and he wrote uh, the Acts of the Apostles. Um, so it's kind of its own thing. Um, historical, theological, lots of good stuff in Acts. Now, from Romans all the way to Philemon, this is the writings of Paul. And uh, these are mostly, if not all, letters. And uh, Romans is kind of a sermon in a letter form. So, you know, from Romans to Philemon, those are the writings of Paul. From Hebrews to Jude, we have the epistles. These are other people in the New Testament time in the first century who wrote. We have Peter, John, Jude. Jude and James were, were uh, brothers of Jesus. Uh, Hebrews, we don't know who wrote Hebrews, but it's, it is a very, very important book. So, and it's actually kind of a, more of a sermon. First John is also more of a sermon than it is a letter. So from Hebrews to Jude, you put a bracket and write the epistles. And then, of course, Revelation, which, like Acts, is kind of its own special uh, book. It, it, it falls into the, the category of prophetic, apocalyptic, poetic literature. And when we get to Revelation, when we get to John's Apocrypha, way at the end of this series, we'll, we'll talk about what that means. Um, but let's start. Let's start with Genesis 1 through 3. So the first question you may have is, what's so important about Genesis 1, 1 through 3? Well, first of all, it's the foundation of who God is. The, the Christian Jewish view of who God is comes straight out of the first three chapters of Genesis. It also is the foundation of who human beings were designed to be. Uh, we believe that God intentionally made humanity for a particular purpose, for a specific purpose. And we're going to see that in the first three chapters of Genesis. It sets up the rest of the story of the Bible. So much of what is in the Bible points back to these first three chapters. These first three chapters sets up, think of it as, as, a, as a novel, sets up the plot. Imagine dropping into the middle of Moby Dick and not knowing what the plot of the book is. Well, the first three chapters of Genesis shows us what the plot of the Bible is. And also it describes the nature of sin and rebellion. That's, these are important questions, sin and rebellion. Uh, we see this in chapter three. Um, the whole point of the Bible is overcoming sin and rebellion. So as we're going through these first three chapters, um, here are some questions. What kind of genre are we reading? Why are there two different creation stories? That's a good question. How do the two creation stories and the third story of the fall connect to the rest of the Bible? We'll talk about that. Lastly, this is the Hebrew view of cosmology. Cosmology is a big word having to do with uh, the creation of the universe, creation of earth, creation of the heavens. It's important to remember how our, the ancient Jewish person would think about cosmology. So the ancient Jewish person would think of heaven as a solid dome of water where the stars dwell. And this is where God stayed. The sky was in between that dome and the earth. Heaven and earth never combined. They, there was heaven and then there was sky, land. They don't come together. God is up there, we're down here. 
Stars and angels and demons are all up there. They don't come down here. Um, occasionally angels will come down, but what do they look like? They look like humans. So this is an important thing to keep in the back of your mind as you're reading the first three chapters of Genesis because this is what's going to set the stage for creation. It's going to set the stage for the rest of the Bible and how they think about things. So let's get into it. Let's get into this first um, part Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3. Now, way back in the, uh, in the 15th and 16th centuries, we had chapters and verses added to the Bible. But before that, there were no chapters and verses in the Bible. It was just one long scroll. It was the Genesis scroll. And... So when they did put chapters and verses in the Bible, m most of the time they did a really good job in separating sections. Here's a place where they missed it. Because the first creation story goes from Genesis 1-1 to chapter 2-3. Um, that's one block, one section. So the first creation story. So let's read, and I'm going to be reading out of my Christian Standard Bible here. Let's look at that very first verse. So open up your Bibles, and we're going to read the first verse, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Such a loaded way to start this book. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is a statement that's foundational to Jewish and Christian theology. What does it say? God pre-existed before everything. In the beginning, so there was a beginning, God, who must have existed before the beginning. In the beginning, God, number two, he created everything. He created the heavens and the earth. Just sit on that for a little while. In the beginning, God created, that means he made everything. John 1, 3 says that there's nothing that exists that has been made, that hasn't been made from God. Nothing exists without God. That's the very first statement. Now, when we go on to the next verse, this is going to get into it even more. And the next verse says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Empty meaning unadorned, uninhibited. It, it, it's a rhyme in Hebrew, formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering, hovering over the surface of the waters. What this is, this is a description of, in the ancient way of saying, this is nothing, okay? We as human beings, think about this for a second. We as human beings have no way of conceptualizing nothing. Because as soon as you start trying to think about nothing, you think about something, right? So we have limited human language to try and describe what nothing is. And so for the ancient Jewish person to try and describe what nothing is, he's saying that the earth is formless, empty, dark, watery. What's that all about? The deep abyss. Watery equals what we would call chaos waters. Water to the ancient mind was a place of chaos. It was a place of evil. It was a place where there was no order around. Nothingness to the ancient mind means no purpose and no order. Now let's talk about the last part of this verse. And the spirit of God. The spirit, the ruah, 
or the breeze or God's presence. You think about the wind when, when you're standing out in your yard and you feel the wind blow. All right. You can't see it. You can't touch it, but you feel it. It's there. And that's what the Spirit of God or the presence of God, God's presence is. And the presence of God was around before anything was made and before anything was able to exist. That's amazing. So we've just gotten into the first two verses of Genesis. God created everything. Before God, there was nothing. And in the Jewish mind, nothing means chaos. It means water. It means the deep abyss, darkness, absence of light, emptiness. But yet, in the formless, empty, dark, watery nothingness, the Spirit of God, the Ruah of God, God's breath was still there. So, that's it for this week. What I would like you to do, read the first chapter of Genesis this week. Read it in several different versions. You know, I have my trusty CSB Bible here. I love that Bible. Read it in the CSB. When you, after you read it in the CSB, pick up your NIV. Pick up your ESV. Read it in several different versions, but read the first chapter of Genesis. Write down what you observe. Because there's some really interesting things when you start looking at the different days of creation. Some things pop out. So that's it for this week. God bless you all. This is Greg Johnston, your chaplain, Wandering Wesleyan. Please like and subscribe this video to this video series. And uh, that will help more people discover the Word of God. Thanks a lot and God bless. Thank you.